Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. Welcome to the Game of Coaching Part 2. Now, as we enter 2022... I just had a conversation with somebody, and it just still amazes me that people are resistant to coaching. It just cracks me up. And I was talking to somebody who is a VP of their company, a VP of operations, and he was talking about how they're busy and they're getting back on track and their supply issues are getting worked out. Things are going to get back to normal. And I sat there and I said, okay. And I said, what's been some of your challenges during the pandemic? He said, well, turnover, you know, now people are leaving for money and, you know, you really can't fight that stuff. And I smiled. He said, what are you smiling at? I said, it's so interesting that you have a major problem like turnover and your first reaction is, can't fight that in terms of the reasons why. He said, oh, so you can? I said, absolutely you can. I said, let me give you a scenario. You've got two scenarios. You've got a manager who, I'm going to use some of your words, doesn't have time to coach. They're really busy. Supply chain issues are getting back to normal, and they're going to get back to work. But, but his or her people are still leaving. On the other hand, somebody has been coaching someone in the exact same situation, spending time every single week for 10, 15 minutes, focusing on an area, focusing on an area of career development, focusing on an area to promote someone's career development and skill development and talent development. And then that person gets an offer from an outside company. Would they be less or more likely to leave? And he stopped. To his, this man's credit, he stopped. He said, boy, I really got to think about that. I said, now, I really want to stop you. He said, what? I go, I'm coaching you right now. And I got you to think differently. And he looked at me and we're on a Zoom call and he said, wow. I said, yeah. I said, look, I'm not trying to prove that you're wrong, but there is nothing more powerful than a manager sitting with his or her people one-on-one or in a group setting and developing them. It builds trust. It builds inspiration. It builds motivation when people are fatigued, exhausted, stressed, filled with anxiety. Doing nothing is really doing something. It's counterproductive. I said, now, let me explain something. I said, did you play sports in high school or college? He said, both. I said, oh, great. You know, what did you play? So I played, you know, D3 basketball. I said, great. I said, I played basketball. I said, I didn't play college. I played high school. But uh, so when you were down and you were playing a team and let's say you were playing a zone, And the other team just had really good outside shooters. And you're down by 20 points. If you were the coach, what would you do? He said, well, I would probably go to a man-to-man defense. I said, you would adjust. As a leader, as a coach, you would adjust. You would navigate some things differently. He said, absolutely. I said, okay. I said, now, let's talk about your players. When you play a zone defense, and for those of you who aren't involved in basketball, zone, basically, you cover an area. Physically, it's less taxing than playing someone man-to-man where you're assigned to a a player and you have to chase them all over the court. I said, in terms of your players, what would you need more from them in a man-to-man defense than a zone defense? He said, well, they'd probably have to be in better shape. They'd have to be uh, more conscientious um, of what was going on in the court instead of just guarding an area. 
I said, awesome. I said, so now, even though the court's the same, the place where you play is the same, it's changed, right? The court takes on a new look because instead of guarding an area, you're now guarding a person. He said, well, yeah. I said, okay, well, let's review. I said, let's go back to coaches. Coaches are leaders in the workplace. I said, according to you, if you're down by 20, you're going to navigate the waters differently. You're going to play a different defense. Didn't you have to do that during the pandemic? And number two, the players have changed, right? All of a sudden they're coming up saying, according to you, I can get more money from someone else. According to you as the coach and the leader, you don't have time to coach. I'm surprised you even have time to have that conversation. And he smiled at me and I could see the light bulb turning on. And I said, and the playing field has changed, right? I said, did you go to a hybrid or a virtual model? He said, both. We're in the hybrid model now. We're just discussing whether to come back full-time in person. I said, okay. I said, have any resistance to that? He said, a little. I said, so the players have changed. The field has changed. People's likes and dislikes of the, of the field have changed. I said, didn't you have people in high school or college who'd rather play zone than man-to-man because it was easier on them? He said, yeah. I said, some people hated the virtual world, then fell in love with it because they're not driving into the office. They're not spending money on gas. It was great to go down the hallway to your third bedroom and conduct business. And you could just see the light bulb go on. So think about the game of coaching. Coaches of teams are leaders in the workplace. Players on the team are the employees, the individual contributors on your team. The field has changed, whether you're hybrid, virtual, in-person. The way people react to those things have dramatically changed. And it requires leaders to do what? To navigate, switch up the game plans, adjust the strategies, adjust the conversations. So when you have an employee, for example, who says, I hate being virtual, I got to come in the office, but wasn't allowed to, yet that same person two years later is now saying, you know what? At minimum, I would love to be hybrid. And all of a sudden the company says, nope, we're all in person. That's going to have an impact. The field has changed. The playing field has changed. Now the playing field for the workplace is the organizational culture. So you can have a strong culture virtually. And I'm not suggesting you should go virtual. I'm suggesting you'll then have to change the way you lead your meetings. You'll have to change the way you mentor and coach your people. You'll have to change how you go about messaging the strategy of what's being implemented. See, the game of coaching is all about understanding who the coaches are, who are the players, what field are we on, and adjusting. And what do we need to adjust? Our dialogue, our conversations, our abilities to motivate, our abilities to inspire, our abilities to understand what motivates. So the game of coaching has changed because the game has changed. The players have changed. The playing field has changed. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called coach to You where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign seven to 21 day programs for employees to learn and more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called Coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.